let's get one let's get one thing out of the way first of all obviously there should be women bishops that's what I believe that should go without saying but just in case it doesn't there you go right now synod have voted against women bishops there are three houses in synod there's the bishops the laity and the clergy they needed a two-thirds majority in all three houses to get it and they missed it by six votes in the laity of course the flaw here is I don't know how many people are in the house of laity uh, rather interestingly some of them were women I don't really understand that but you know I'm sure women can explain that who are against it obviously because they've got reason for being against it now one of the things that was surprising to me was that the people that were against women bishops were not so much the Anglo-Catholics although I expect they were but the conservative evangelicals and the reason I'm surprised by that is because I was involved in a conservative evangelical church in the late 70s and they had a woman preacher so clearly that particular probably small group of uh, Christians who were conservative and the, and the evangelical did support the idea of women priests. Now I don't understand how people have got from that position to this position in the intervening three or four decades, three decades. Um, so that's something I don't understand. Okay. Um, everyone accepts that there will eventually be women bishops. Um, the thing is that if there weren't it's possible that the church would become disestablished. Now, there is an issue about that, which is that if we have an established church, which means that there are people, there are bishops in the House of Lords and a number of other things, like for example, um, Church of England funded state schools or state funded Church of England schools uh, and things like that. Um, there is a problem on one side which is that obviously there's the idea that there could be a positive moral influence from the church on the state but there's also a problem from the other side that the state can be a negative influence on the church and it counts as a moral compromise for example the state has weapons of mass destruction it wages wars there's a question about whether those wars are just or not and it does other things like for example it condones the charging of interest which the bible forbids and it also um, expects people to be able to take oaths in various ways, which the Bible also forbids because you're not supposed to take promises according to uh, Christianity, according to the Gospels. So, um, we are members of the church. We are also members of the church invisible and the wider church, the church in the sense of the body of people, the, the set of people, all of whom... God recognises as God's own people and then there's the institution of the Church of England which we are officially and legally members of and are able to vote and take part in the general life of the church now that's a different church hopefully most of the people in it are members of the church invisible as well but not necessarily so when the Church of England votes in a particular way or makes a particular decision although it is supposed to be discerning the um, will of God it doesn't necessarily have any impact on membership of the church or the church as such because the church is not just a human institution now if the church became disestablished as a result of there being no women bishops we're faced with a rather paradoxical situation where the church is no longer forced to compromise its values because it no longer has to condone weapons of mass destruction um, the way the state treats the third world, uh, the way the state treats poor, poor people, and things like that. And so, in a way, it's in a better moral position. But it's in a better moral position because of a decision which most people would consider to be immoral, i.e. not allowing there to be women bishops. So, in a way, maybe disestablishment would be a good thing. It would be a good thing that came out of a negative situation, which does very often happen in Christianity, is that God tends to build positives out of the negative situations. He does it from the most unpromising start. And I think that's perhaps what we can take from this.